Would you like to just do a quick introduction of yourself and of your music? Uh, yeah, so my name's Lorena. Um, I'm an indie pop artist. Uh, I write my own music and I, I produce a lot of it. I'll co-produce it sometimes. And I write a lot about mental health, mental illness and love, you know, like normal, normal topics as well. But yeah, so that's what I mostly write about. All right, thank you for your quick introduction. And so I asked, the audience on my Instagram, like a few questions that they might have for you. So I think we have about six or seven lined up for today. So they're super, super simple. And the first one is actually asking about what are your inspirations in music? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely always just say like um, what I grew up on, which was Marvin Gaye and the Beach Boys and all that old school music. But I think nowadays I more listen to producers that I like. Um, there's a, a producer named Stint. He's done a lot of Sabrina Claudio, uh, Lance Stella, Madison Beer, that type of indie pop stuff. So, yeah. You just named a few of my favorite artists. <laughs> so much. <laughs> so, good. Um, so I've been listening to a lot of your songs and in talking to you, I noticed that you're a very big um, activist for mental health and mental awareness. Can you kind of tell us like why this is such a passion for you if it's not too much? Yeah, no, totally. I'm actually an open book about mental health. Um, I've I've posted online about mental illness since I was really young um, because I was just reaching out to anyone on the internet that I could find to be similar to me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a big advocate, advocate because I have it myself. I have bipolar uh, too. And then my family members have a form of schizophrenia called schizoaffective and also bipolar. So just living with it, um, you know, I, I write a lot about it because it's the only way I can kind of cope with it. But when it comes to advocating for it, I just feel like when I was younger, I wished I had more outlets to connect with people. So I just talk about it. So there's less of a stigma around it being kind of a quiet thing. And I also just, um, you know, try to create like support groups and things like that. So well, that's, that's really, really interesting. Um, so would you say that music is kind of like your biggest release um, or like your emotions and things like that? Totally. Um, I've, I've, I'm so yeah, in bipolar and the up swings, I can make so many songs and have so many great ideas where I think they're great in my bipolar state. <laughs> and then, um, I, so yeah, I, I have a whole album called Sugar Pills, which is all dedicated to that. So I mean, it's the only way that I kind of can make sense of things sometimes is putting it in like a little capsule of time, you know, so. Um, I've actually yeah. listened to that album. In oh, my really? time. It's really, really good. I really like all the songs on there. Thank you. That makes me so uh, happy. So um, to follow from that, someone wanted to ask, what would you say is your songwriting process like? Yes. Um, yeah, so it's different every time. But so you, when you write a song, you can start with like a guitar and just, you know, singing over the guitar or you can create a beat and then write over that drum loop. So every time it's different. And I do write a lot by myself because it's easier to make sense of all of my ideas. But when you co-write with people, um, it's also nice because they'll give their input on the direction the song will take. So sometimes it won't be what I want, but it's good to let go of control and see what else can happen. Oh yeah, definitely. So would you say that there's a particular artist that you're looking forward to or hoping that you could write a song with in the future? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. I, I to write like with them for me in mind or for like another artist to sing maybe. Um, oh, all my friends are songwriters. So <laughs> I can't think of anyone famous or anything because I don't, in my head, I'm always just writing for myself. Um, but it would be nice if some of my favorite artists ever got to, you know, do my songs. <laughs> I would love that. And so the next one actually relates to some of the artists that you might like. And it says, what are your top five songs right now if you were to have to choose? Oh, my God. OK, this it changes all the time because I'm always studying music for the production and the writing. But I would say Lennon Stella's um, Older Than I Am. I love that song. I love um, Sabrina Claudio's Unravel Me. Um, I really like, I, I mean, this is the stuff I'm just listening to right now. Olivia O'Brien's Better Than Feeling Lonely. Um, who else is there? 
there's a new song by Madison Beer called Carried Away. I really, when I get obsessed with some artists, I just listen to just them for a while and then I'll move back over to another group. But those are the ones currently that I'm looping and like studying. How do they do that bass line? How can I do it? <laughs> so. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm super, super excited for the Madison Beer album coming out. <laughs> I, I relate to her so much. Just her, just the fact that she's like a sensitive person with like a mental health thing going on and she just writes music that you know in the genre that I love too so I just I really love her new album life support to be honest so yeah I think I've learned way too many of the songs on there as well um and so I guess with that of all the songs that you have right now is there one that you think you could if you could pick should be like a hit song or something that more people should hear yeah so I I've been dying to put out my next EP album. It's like six to seven songs. Um, from the ones that aren't out, there's a new one called Strangers that I really want to put out that I think could be like, you know, my baby. Um, but from the ones that are out, I'm still kind of hard on myself. I don't think they're good enough, but I feel like I'm getting better all the time. So I feel like I'm more excited about the stuff coming out, even though I should be proud of what I already put out, if that makes sense. And so... With that, I think there's like three questions left. One being, um, if you could give any advice to any musicians or any wannabe songwriters, do you, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to say? Yeah, I think the best thing you can do if you want to get into songwriting is see how much you can get yourself to collaborate because consistency is key. I would say I've written thousands of bad songs and then there's one song in there that's good. So it's really... As songwriters, it's hard to be consistent because we're all about feelings and when we feel like doing it. But, you know, there's people and I think it's like the Nashville way where they get up from like nine to five and work on their craft. So the more consistent you can make it, even if you're not feeling it that day, you're going to get a good song eventually. Like join a songwriting club or take a class or something. And all right, so this next question asks about like any of the musical challenges you think you might face as a female artist. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I talk about this all the time. I, I really want to be a girl, a woman producer, because I feel like a lot of the time in this industry, it is kind of sad how people will like male producers will prey on women. And I really almost in the future wish to have some sort of like course for girls on red flags because a lot of people will prey on you and your hopes and your dreams. Um, Jesse Reyes has a song on this that's so good. I forget the name of it though. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's talking about her experience where a producer pretends that he wants to do her, you know, record her song, but really he just wants to get with her. And I think that's the hardest part is just having to navigate so many disingenuous people but if you do find the right people, really stick with them because good people are sort of hard to find. <laughs> and so the last really big uh, question that the audience had for you was, do you plan on releasing any music soon or are you still in the process right now? Yeah, so I have um, this new album. I guess it's an album now. I always try to make shorter things, but it, I end up writing so much that it's become an album. Um, it's called Checklist Love. And um, that's supposed to come out by June of this year. And I'm hoping I can have a single out by April around my birthday or May. Um, so yeah, Checklist Love, I'm really excited about that one coming out. And so this is a question I typically love to ask anyone I interview. And that is, what song do you want me to play? I will play it sometime in this little episode for the audience to kind of get to know you more and just get into similar vibes as you. Totally. Um, I think the one I would like would probably be window shopping. That's the one that's about if it's, it's basically like a love song to, I guess, mental illness saying, if I wasn't so mentally ill, maybe I would be able to have found love by now type of thing. And it's about just going through trauma and how trauma can affect you know, your, not only your love life, but all of your relationships. And so window shopping was just basically saying, I feel like my whole life is going by with me just staring at other people living their lives while I'm kind of stuck in this traumatic state. So, I mean, not anymore, you know, going to therapy and getting better, but at that time, that's how it felt. So, and I like the sound, I call it like Cynthia Marvin Gaye. I wish I was Marvin Gaye, but I'm not. <laughs> um, 
I guess I just want to say something to you since I've been listening to your music for like this entire like process since I've reached out to you before I reached out to you and I really I like I don't have like the similar life experiences as you have but I feel like it's a it's sort of like a a lot of your songs people can relate to even if it's not the exact same experience and so how do you feel uh, having like people listen to your music and feel even if it's not the same experiences that they can relate to you in a way that's such a good question. Honestly, sometimes I forget that people listen who don't exactly have mental illness, you know, and I, I, I realized too that I've always said that, or I, I think I got this from a movie that mental illness is just human emotions kind of ex, like expanded. And um, so I feel like the fact that I feel like, oh, I might never find love because I'm too damaged or whatever th those feelings are. I think that is a universal thing. So it does make me feel good that my pain and loneliness over the years, um, not only can make me feel better with a song, but hopefully, you know, it's cool that people are listening and relating to that, even if they don't have that exact condition, you know, so. All right, well, um, those are all the questions that we had for you today. Um, so I, I'm doing this small thing. I am a not professional singer, <laughs> um, but I am trying to actually start recording like covers because I, yes. And so I've, I've started trying to learn some of your songs because I want to cover one of them. And it is, your vocals are so different from mine. And it's so interesting <laughs> to like try to like start integrating my vocals into like a style that you have. Um, so cool to me. That's like the best thing I've heard all month, all year. <laughs> That's awesome. But I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm almost there. Hopefully I can have it out soon song do, do you mind me asking which one it is you're trying to cover um I did wasn't made for love because <laughs> <laughs> I don't I was I was listening to all of your songs and I really like a lot of them I really especially like distract me and I was like how am I gonna sing it <laughs> <laughs> and that makes me happy that's so cool I mean if you do do that please let me know because I'll just it'll really make my day just to see that and no pressure though if you don't feel like doing it I get it but I would love to see it. That's so amazing. <laughs> um, so um, are there any like parting words you want to tell the audience or anything you want to say? Um, just that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of cheesy, but I always want to spread hope. I think that I've been through so much in my life with my particular thing. And I know there's a lot of people going through a lot of things right now. So I always just try to keep my eyes on the end of the dark tunnel at the, the light at the end of the tunnel um things do get better as, as depressed as you may feel or has, as bad as it may seem there is a better you know day coming so that's that's my little parting words <laughs> all right well thank you so much for coming on the show today i really really appreciate it um for anyone listening this interview i will try to upload a visual interview as well as just the written interview so anyone who would like to check out more or find out more from music, you can just do so. And I will explain more at the end of the show. Oh, thank you so much. This was so fun. Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear your cover. <laughs> That's going to make me so happy. If you could only see you from my
before I